Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heidi if this is your first time here and if you're new here I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Today I'm gonna do a nude matte eye look so without further ado let's just get started. Today I'm gonna start with skincare because I have a new SPF to talk about. This is L'Oreal Revitalift Filler plus Hyaluronic Acid SPF 50. This was sent to me in PR, but as always, I'm not required to talk about any of these products and I always give you my honest opinions. I normally use the Bondi Sense SPF 50 and I have mentioned that I just don't really like the texture of it, but it works really well for my skin type. And that one is very glowy and it feels kind of thick on the skin, I guess. Like it's just a thicker texture. I find that whenever I wear that SPF, I have to use powder to like mattify my face because I don't like to be that glowy. So this I've been only using for two days now so I can't give you like a full review or anything yet. I am trying this out, I'm using only this and not the Bondi Sense SPF just to see how my skin reacts but so far I haven't had any problem. L'Oreal has sent me these two before. This one is the Revital Lip Filler plus Hyaluronic Acid. It looks very similar to this one, but the texture is completely different. This one is very creamy and kind of thick, and it feels like absolutely nothing on the skin. This and also the Revital Lift Fragrance Free version. I started noticing that these actually don't work that well with my makeup. My makeup would start like peeling, you know, when it like peels off in those little rolls. That's but sadly these two did, so I've been using these as nighttime moisturizers because my skin still really likes these or if I know I'm not gonna wear makeup that day then I wear these. I didn't know this that in the beginning when I started using these and I think it's because I was using the retinol so my skin was like peeling off anyway and makeup didn't look that good. But yeah, I want to mention that about these two. But this new one is completely different. It is not as creamy. It almost feels like it has a little bit of like grit to it, which is very strange. When I apply it on my face. It is not fragrance free and the first time I tried this my skin was very very dry and I did notice that it didn't like burn my face but my face felt kind of like warm like my face just doesn't really like the fragrance that much but the texture of this was so nice and for now I'm using this under my makeup not the Bondi Sense one because I don't need to really powder. I would think people with oily skin especially would really like this because it has such a nice finish. It's not like a glowy SPF. I wanted to do my skincare on camera since I have that new SPF to try so you can just see kind of the finish. I did use my Bondi Sense SPF 50 in my last video so if you want to see the finish of that you can just watch that video later you can see how glowy that is, so you can kind of compare the two there. My skin is at the moment a little bit more dry, especially like my nose for some reason. Um, this one isn't moisturizing enough, it is too light for that, so I'm applying a little bit of my CeraVe moisturizing lotion under this SPF. I'm gonna get a good amount, I'll probably apply more because I do like to apply a pretty thick layer of SPF. And this one didn't leave a white cast either. It's kind of hard for me to chat about white cast because I am so fair. <laughs> I feel like this one has less of a white cast, if that's even a thing, than the Bondi Sense SPF 50 that I normally use. And I've seen a lot of people with, at least with medium skin tone, saying that that one doesn't leave a white cast. So I feel pretty confident to say that this one doesn't either. <laughs> and now I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes for this to sink in. Let's do the face makeup next. I'm gonna use the NYX Marshmallow Primer. I also have a foundation to try today that I haven't tried on my channel before. I have used it once before, I used it earlier today. This is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. Mine is in the shade 2N Vanilla. The True Match Concealer used to be my everyday concealer when I had good skin before I moved to the UK. For some reason my skin just like freaked out when I moved here. <laughs> had to start using fuller coverage concealers. The True Match concealer is kind of like light to medium coverage and it looks so beautiful. It looks completely like your skin. It looks like you're not wearing any concealer. It's just so beautiful. I've gone through at least four bottles of it in the past. I cannot be more excited about this. This one is also a light coverage foundation. So in the back it says it has perfect natural coverage. Hydrating care to moisturize and beautify your skin. 24 hours hydration improves skin quality in two weeks. So I'm guessing this probably has some skincare ingredients in it. I did think this was a good match for my skin tone. 
and I'm not sure about the hydration. I feel like it literally just sinks into the skin. I don't feel like I need to even powder it really. And it just looks so beautiful. It's the same with the concealer. It just melts into the skin and it just looks like your natural skin. It doesn't look like you're actually wearing foundation. I do feel like the pump felt a little cheap though, but the glass bottle is nice. So I'm going to pump a little bit of this on the back of my hand. This is one pump. That's how much product you get. And I feel like one pump is enough for me. I'm using a foundation brush to blend this out. And I was actually really surprised how good the coverage of this was when I used this earlier today. I feel like I was expecting it to be more like the Berry M Skin Tint, like a very, very, barely bare coverage. This one is definitely like a light to medium. The foundation covered like these little scars that I have right here. Not completely, but it did add a little bit of coverage, which the Berry M Fresh Face Foundation, for example, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't cover any of my scars. So here as well, you can see I have a big scar right there. You can see that it really did add a little bit of coverage. The finish of this is just so beautiful. I hope you can see how skin-like it is. I had such high expectations for this foundation just because of how much I love the True Much Concealer. And because my expectations were so high, I was really expecting this to be kind of a letdown. And it so wasn't. Just first impressions, just from trying it today, it is the best foundation I've ever tried. I will wear this today the whole day and I will leave you an update so you know how well it wears as well. For concealer, I'm using the Revolution Conceal and Define Infinite Concealer in C3.5. And I find I really don't need to use a lot of this because the foundation covered pretty well. gonna use the B by Supertruck Sculpt and Highlight Contour Stick in Universal. I will only be using the contour side, it has a highlighter on the other end. And I'm also going to contour my lips with this. This is the Berry M Fresh Face Cheek and Lip Tint in Caramel Kisses. And now I'm gonna set my face using the Maybelline Matte Maker Powder. This is in the shade Classic Ivory, number 10. I'm using an Ego Tools Control Setting Brush. You can just see how kind of like a flawless base that created. It makes my skin almost look like a little bit blurred. For blush, I'm using the Makeup Revolution Blusher Reloaded in Sweet Pea. For highlighter, I'm using the Makeup Revolution Highlighter Reloaded in Golden Lights. I'm using the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. Starting with my favorite shade in the palette, this one is called Tease. And this is a color pop blending brush. This goes all over the crease and I will also blend whatever is left on the brush towards the nose contour. Next I'm using this shade called Foxy, which is a light matte shade. It has a little bit of yellow to it, it's like a pale yellow. And this goes on the lid. And also on the brow bone. And then I'm gonna use this matte black shade called Blackout as an eyeliner. And this is an angled liner brush from Morphe. I'm first just darkening the lash line and then I'm creating a small wing and I'm following my natural eye shape that's all the eyeshadow that I'm going to do I'm not gonna apply any eyeshadow on the lower lash line next is mascara this is the L'Oreal double extension waterproof mascara this is a gouache pencil brush and I'm going to use a little bit of that highlighter that I used on my face in the inner corners. I normally do my brows before I do my eyes, but I kind of forgot today. So I'm going to do brows now. I'm using the Revlon Colorstay Brow Pencil in Blonde. And I wanted to mention the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I have the shade Taupe. Because I mentioned in a previous video when I bought this that like 
I really love this because it's so thin and it's easy to draw like hair like strokes with this because it is so thin and it's affordable it's drugstore you know the color is so beautiful it's a true like taupe color i was wondering like why haven't i repurchased this in a long time and i remember now it's because of this pulley this pulley completely broke like the plastic around this pulley broke so i cannot really fix this there's an entire piece that would come off if it didn't have my hair gel all over it so it's completely useless like, and i can use this pulley i also had the exact same thing happen with my anastasia beverly hills browis which is essentially the exact same product as this i don't know who makes this packaging but yeah this this pulley is not good so as much as i love the brow pencil and i will finish this before throwing it out. It's not something I can really recommend because of the spoolie. So let me know if you have had this or the ABH Brow Wiz and has the same thing happened to you? So yeah, this one I haven't had a problem with. This is also a product I've had before. The spoolie is very sturdy. So I'm combing my brow hairs down, drawing a line on top. Brush everything back up and use a little bit of got to be glued hair gel from Schwarzkopf and press down the brow hairs now to the lips i already contoured before when i was contouring my face with a contour stick but i'm gonna use a little bit of my mac blush in harmony so just gonna go right over your natural lip line with this with a little bit of product you really don't need a lot and it creates a nice shadow around your lips, so it really kind of plumps your lips. This is the NYX Lip Pencil in Nude Truffle. I'm lining my lips with this and coloring in the outer corners. Then I'm using the L'Oreal Rouge Signature Matte Liquid Lipstick in I Empower 110. So this is what my face looks like after eight hours of wearing this look. I did change my lip product. I put on some lip gloss because my lips were really dry, but I didn't add any powder or concealer or anything throughout the day. So the foundation wears really, really beautifully. And I feel like my skin looks kind of filtered. I think all the products, the foundation, the concealer, and the Maybelline Matte Maker powder worked really well together. And it created a really good base. I do tend to leave my face to my hands a lot throughout the day. So I did lose maybe a little bit of coverage along the jawline at least. But in general, it lasted very well and I didn't need any extra powdering. I really hope you enjoyed this matte nude moment. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe share this video with someone. Uh, all of that really helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing now. I hope you've had a really lovely week and I hope to see you here next time. Bye.